Hi, and welcome to Now Hear This, a look at podcasting trends in higher education. I'm Michael Cheney, and I'm glad to be here to join you for the next 10 days or so as we take a look at this well-established Web 2.0 technology, podcasting, and the use of this technology to enhance our classes in higher education. And hi, this is Burks Oakley, and I'm also delighted to be with you and to interact with you. Hopefully, we'll all be learning a lot from each other as we move forward with this Sloan C online workshop. I think we have an exciting 10 days ahead of us. And now a little bit about ourselves. I'm Michael, and I've been teaching in higher education for over 35 years, and actually taught my first online class through the Plato system at the University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign in 1974. Since then, I've tried to bring into my classes the latest technology to enhance the learning environment. I'm particularly enamored with Web 2.0 technologies, which let the students have a more robust set of ways to learn. Of those technologies, I find podcasting particularly useful as it lets students have audio, audio with graphics, and even video right on their desktop or even their tablet computer or smartphone. In my classes in communication, as well as economics and liberal studies, I have found it adds immensely to the students' appreciation and understanding of the class material. Gosh, Michael, I wish I were as glib as you and could simply sit down and start talking about myself. But after all, you are a professor of communication. As you all can see, I'm the person on the right in this slide. I'm the one that has a little more hair than that fellow on the left. Hey, hey. <laughs> well, at any rate, I've also been at the University of Illinois, gosh, for over 30 years now. I'm officially a professor emeritus of electrical and computer engineering on the Urbana campus. But I also have an appointment as a scholar in residence on the Springfield campus. From 1997 until 2007, I was the director of the University of Illinois Online Initiative, working to develop and deliver online programs on all three of our campuses. I do have some experience teaching online. I've taught a number of online courses for the Springfield campus. And of course, I can do that from my home here in Champaign, Illinois, or wherever I happen to be. And Burks, make sure to mention that you received the Sloan C Award for Outstanding Achievement in Online Education by an individual. Well, Michael, you received the Sloan C Award for Excellence in Online Teaching this past year, which is definitely an outstanding accomplishment. Thanks, Burks. That award is something of which I am especially proud. So here we are, the two of us, and, and again, we're really looking forward to talking about podcasting as a mature Web 2.0 technology, as well as the pedagogy of podcasting and how we best can use this technology in our blended and fully online courses. Well, why don't we just go on to the next slide now? And as I said, Michael, here's a list of the topics that we'll be covering in this workshop. We'll first begin with an introduction to podcasting, some background material, some readings, and a streaming presentation where we'll go over the basics of podcasting, really what it's all about. And then we'll all go on and have you survey a number of podcasts as a consumer, someone who downloads podcasts and listens to them or views them. You'll become a consumer of podcasts, much as your students would be, or as many of us currently are. And then we'll move on to you becoming a producer of podcasts. We'll take a step-by-step -step look at creating a podcast, and in fact, we'll guide you through producing your own podcast, particularly for those who have not produced a podcast before. And we'll all share and critique some podcasts. Then we'll look more broadly at the pedagogy of podcasting, the ways that we can most effectively use podcasting to improve student learning in higher education. You know, Michael, I bought a new Android smartphone last summer. I downloaded an app that lets me subscribe to various podcasts. So now I'm able to listen to podcasts on my cell phone. That really tells me what a mature technology podcasting has become. Right you are, Burks. I actually like to listen to podcasts on my iPad. Podcasting is just one more component of what we call mobile learning. Let's go on to the next slide now. As we move forward with this workshop, we're starting on Wednesday, November 7th. That's when we'll have the introductory materials available and we'll start a separate forum in the Moodle discussion forums for each of the participants to introduce themselves to the others in the workshop. And we'll also create some additional forums for discussing both the technology and the pedagogy of podcasting. Then a few days later on Friday, November 9th, we'll open up another discussion about being a consumer of podcasts, 
where we actually will have you subscribe to some podcasts, download them, listen to them, critique them, and see how they're used in higher education. And then on Monday, November 12th, we'll get started on producing podcasts, and all of us will begin to distribute our podcasts to share them with the whole group to critique and to make suggestions for improvement. Michael, looking ahead, are the participants going to need any special technologies to do this? Good question, Burks. My middle name is free, so that everything we will need will be free. We will be using free technologies. Simply, all you will need is a microphone and your computer, of course, and we'll point you to the sources of the other free software tools you'll be using. So any old cheap microphone will do? Uh, anything I can plug into my computer, right? Absolutely. And, in fact, then the participants can use their microphones to participate in the Blackboard Collaborate session, the synchronous session that we'll be doing on Friday, November 16th, at the end of this online workshop. That synchronous session is scheduled from 2 to 3 p.m. Eastern Time that day. During that session, we'll have an opportunity to discuss what we've learned during the workshop, and the participants will be able to ask any questions that they may have. Again, if the participants have that microphone that they used in making their podcasts, they will be able to interact using the audio feature of Collaborate. And it looks like a great week ahead. I sure hope that the workshop participants enjoy this workshop and find it to be worthwhile. I know that a number of the workshop participants will want to earn a certificate of completion for this workshop. And on this slide, we've listed the four activities that will have to be completed successfully in order to earn this certificate. Yes, Berks, those four activities include one, critiquing a podcast in your discipline using our podcast assessment tool, two, subscribing to a podcast series using iTunes, three, describing how you could use podcasting in a class you teach, and four, recording an audio file in MP3 format and uploading it to a web server. I think that by completing these four activities successfully, the workshop participants will get a good idea of what podcasting is and how they could use podcasting to improve student engagement and student learning in the classes that they teach. You know, Michael, before we conclude this presentation, we should tell the viewers how we're producing it. You're in your office on the UIS campus in Springfield, while I'm in my home office in Champaign. With the high cost of gasoline, I didn't feel like driving 90 miles each way to go to UIS just to record this presentation, even though I drive a fuel-efficient vehicle. We're speaking over the internet using the free Skype software, and our conversation is being recorded using the free MP3 Skype recorder software running on my Windows PC. This software saves the audio directly on my computer in MP3 format. That's right, Burks. We started using the MP3 Skype recorder product several years ago, and it seems to work really well. Imagine using this with podcasting in the class you're teaching. You could have a Skype conversation with an expert in your field and record it with the MP3 Skype recorder, and then you could add the MP3 file to a podcast. Sure, and the expert could be anywhere in the world with a broadband connection using the free Skype software. At any rate, once we conclude our conversation, I'll edit the audio track and synchronize it to the PowerPoint slides. And I'll also create a slide cast of this presentation at slideshare.net. During this Sloan C Online workshop, we'll be glad to interact with you, of course, and to answer any questions that you may have. It's probably easiest if you simply post those questions to the discussion forums in Moodle. But if you want to contact us by email, you certainly can, and our email addresses are given on this slide. And if you want to find out anything more about us, we also list the URL of our personal websites on this slide. So, Michael, I'm really looking forward to the next 10 days. These Sloan C online workshops are always quite enjoyable. You are so right, Burks. To sum up, we're really looking forward to interacting with all of you in this Sloan C online workshop.